Good afternoon and welcome to the ASEAN Midday Market Watch. Our guest today is Kelvin Wong. He's the market strategist at CMC Market. Kelvin, good to have you on the show. Hi, 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 Brian. Uh, a good day to you as well, yeah. Now, Kelvin, before we speak to you, let's take a quick look at markets around the region. And it's a sea of green across the region. We've got the SGX at 2,969.1. It's up a whopping 1.52%. Bursa Malaysia is up 1.04% at 1,573.74. Now, across the region, it's the green continues. We've got uh, the Nikkei is up 1.59% at 30,143.94. The Shanghai Composite is up 1.07% at 3,602.28. The Hang Seng is up 2.15% at 30,356.4. ASX 200 is up 1.17% at 6,857. And the Kospi rounds it up with a gain of 2.78% at 3,078.80. Now, Kelvin, what's the driving this positivity across markets? Markets are up sharply. Yes, good. Uh, so what we could see uh, since the start of this week, uh, in fact, uh, we talk about Asia first. So actually, most of the major stock indices in Asia actually kind of outperform the U.S. market. So if you look at the U.S. market has been kind of underperforming since the last five days. So one of the major reasons is that if you look at the several big U.S. Uh, major stock indices, be it the S&P 500, the Nasdaq 100, okay, all these are kind of heavily weighted accordingly to uh, mega tech. US big tech stocks. We're talking about the Fed and Microsoft. And if you look at the last uh, three to four days, or in fact close to about two weeks, market participants are kind of very concerned about this rising long dated sober bond yields, be it in the US and the rest of the world. So that kind of a, a strong negative uh, correlation with this uh, US mega tech stocks. So if you look at this US mega tech stocks, right, they has been coming down by quite a fair bit since the last four to five days. So what happened, in fact, yesterday or prior to the day before yesterday, we obviously on uh, US time, will be in Tuesday, is that we start to see a bit of pause in that sell-off in US big tech stocks. Uh, and yesterday, it kind of a positive follow-through. Uh, all of this is kind of kind of given by a comforting reassurance by a kind of dovish uh, Fed chair uh, during his testimony in this uh, semi semi annual testimony to Congress yesterday and on uh, Tuesday. Yeah. yeah so, so that is kind of a, yeah. Yes. Go ahead, uh, Calvin. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's a kind of a driving uh, force that kind of feedback the positive uh, momentum back into the markets. Okay, I'm going to uh, uh, break down what you just said in two different parts and we'll zoom in yes. first on uh, Chairman Powell's uh, testimony. Now, what impact, mm. in your view, is it going to have on Asian financial markets? All right. So, in fact, uh, to me, it will, uh, it's very likely to be very positive going forward, at least in the near to the medium term. Why? Because firstly, if you look at Asia financial markets, we're talking about the region major stock indices, especially on Japan, then talk about Singapore as well. Most of our market major benchmark indices are heavily weighted towards cyclicals, which is we're talking about the banks or several industrial related stocks. In Japan, it will be banks, definitely the, the big banks as well. So what we see right now is that we are actually benefiting from this rising yield, treasury yield. Yeah. We have this ongoing uh, reflation team play that is taking into the markets. that also giving, we call it a positive uh, reaction into the commodity space as well. It also tends to benefit uh, some of our Asia markets because we are cut. some of them are actually exporters of commodity related products. This first aspect. The second aspect, or in fact, Powell uh, comment to Congress and say that, hey, yeah, we, we, we do know that uh, currently right now there's this ongoing vaccine rollout, there's this pickup in inflation, but he do not believe that in the next one to two years, in fact, more than three years, they will actually meet Fed's inflation target. So with that in mind, right, what he means that currently, Fed's bond buying program, which actually providing another source of, uh, we call it a, a positive feedback to the market, which is the current liquidity punch bowl, that is, uh, I, which I don't believe that it will be taken up so soon, uh, at least between the six, uh, a six months period from now, given his testimony congress, yeah. Now, I, I wanna go back to what we talked about in terms of the, the sell-off of tech stocks. And yes. is this really, uh, 
immediate correction for risk access because they've run up so much? Or is yes. it really a rotation play progress as investors are kind of moving to cyclicals and laggards um, and, and basically just switching investments? Yeah, so uh, actually there's two things I want to share regarding about this this prelude of the major talk. Okay, firstly, if you look at the last we talk about the last 10 years, big tech or in fact other tech related stocks has been leading the broader market. So they are up close to some about 200%. So in fact, a lot of global fund managers portfolio are kind of heavily skewed towards these big tech stocks in the last 10 years. They build up this position. So what we got to be aware is the rate of increase in this rising uh, we call it long dated bond yields, several bond yields worldwide. So if this bond yields worldwide, right, it starts to actually rise too steeply, too fast and too soon. So that could actually create a problem on the big tech stocks. Why? Because we may start to see a rush of exit to unwind this position. Okay, so that's why over here, global central banks got to come in to kind of give an assurance that, hey, we know that bond yields are rising, but however, we are still there to provide this kind of liquidity backdrop into the market to actually suppress the pace of this increase. Okay, then the next key thing is right now is that inflation. So we've got to watch out that inflation risk got to be well maintained expectation. So as long as inflation risk is kind of uh, well maintained with expectation, uh, one of the benchmark we can look at will be crude oil prices, which is a uh, kind of preview to inflation risk. Uh, we talk about WTI crude. So WTI crude, there's a major resistance at around the 75 US dollar per barrel. So if we start to see a uh, 75 US dollar per barrel holding the, the this this recent rise in the uh, oil prices, uh, I will not start to see inflation risk creeping back into the picture yet into the markets. So that we what that what we could actually lead us to a kind of a gentle rotation up from big tech. That means big tech will start to do a kind of a big sideways configuration in the next six months, whilst rotation will start to flow into nuggets that has been underperforming the general market in the last let's say five to six years. Firstly, we talk about energy stocks. We're talking about cyclicals, we're talking about old school stocks like, for example, industry related stocks and even commodities related stocks. Okay, could you, in, 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 a, in a Singapore, Malaysia, ASEAN context, which are the sectors that really have lag, lagged a lot, particularly on the SGX and perhaps on Bursa Malaysia? Okay, if maybe we're talking about SGX, there are a couple of counters that we can look at, would be the banking stocks in Singapore. Okay, then also we could actually look at also uh one of the very interesting interesting play will be in Singapore itself will be several oil and gas related stocks that has been uh, kind of a uh, laggard in the last uh two to three years. So that could be a sector to, to actually look out for for the Singapore perspective. Okay. And, uh yeah. So sorry, over to Japan. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. You were saying Japan? Yeah. yeah, so over to Japan as well. If you look at Japan, in fact, right now it's also playing a catch up. So Japan banks itself, the, we talk about the, the, the local Japan banks, has also kind of been depressed in the last three to four years in terms of valuation, uh, not over, really overstretched yet. Uh, I still see potential pocket of growth in this Japanese stock also added by this uh, rising uh, yield between the longer data yield and the shorter data yield, talking about bond yields here. So that could actually improve their net interest margin business. Now, Calvin, thank you very much for your insights. Sure. Thank you, Brian. Now, we've been speaking to Kelvin Wong, market strategist at CMC Markets on Biztech's ASEAN Midday Market Watch. I'm Brian Fernandez. Check out www.biztech.asia for business and technology conversations.